Hello everyone. So the topic of this video is types of mutations. In the previous video, we have already covered the topics of definition, the causes and the significance of mutations. So those of you who haven't covered those topics till now, I would recommend you to go through that video first and then shift to this topic of types of mutations. So in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to focus on remembering all the types of mutations. I will go into the details of all the types of mutations in the subsequent videos. But for now, our main focus is to understand how the various types of mutations emerge. What is the basis of the classifications of various types of mutations? And we will do it in an interesting way by dividing all the types of mutations into three broad classification schemes. And in the end, we'll end up having a study map for mutations so that you can have all the types listed in a single page and in an interesting manner in order to memorize it easily. So let's start. So what are those three broad classification schemas which I have been talking about? Those three classification schemas are actually the scale of mutations, at what level is mutation taking place, the causes of mutations, what are the actual causes of mutations, and then there is a third classification scheme which is the types of cells impacted by the mutations. So based upon these three classification schemas, you actually get all the types of mutations. Let's understand how by starting with the causes of mutations and the cells impacted. On the basis of the causes of mutations, you have two types of mutations. One is induced and other is spontaneous. Now, as the name suggests, induced mutations are those which are actually caused by some external factor. There is always some external factor or some external trigger existing which causes such mutations. So, now that factor can be some chemical or it can be some radiation or infectious agent. So there is always an inducible agent. Some agent exists, some external factor exists which causes such mutations and we call them induced mutations. Well, to enlist such of for some of those causes, there are radiation as I told you, there are chemicals as I told you, and then there are infectious agent. And all these agents, infectious agents, are termed as mutagens. These are the mutation inducing factors, mutagens. Okay, so now we have covered one type of mutation which is based upon the causes of mutation and we call it induced mutations. And then opposite to it okay, is spontaneous mutations. Spontaneous mutations are, as the name suggests, they happen internally without any without any external trigger there is no external trigger for those mutations to happen they happen spontaneously they happen internally without any external mutation so such mutations are called spontaneous mutations now the reason for such mutations can actually be some fault in the DNA repair mechanism. So DNA repair mechanism is an internal mechanism that makes sure that any change or any damage, any mutation which happen at the DNA level should be repaired properly. And if that DNA repair mechanism itself becomes faulty, what you get are spontaneous mutations. Okay. So now we have covered two types of mutations. One is induced and the other is spontaneous. And these two types are actually based upon which classification scheme? The causes of mutations. Okay, now based upon the causes, it's induced and spontaneous. And then 
what are the types of mutations which are in based upon the cells impacted well then those are germline mutations and somatic mutations germline mutations are those in which the cells impacted are sex cells or the gametes now because of the fact that it's the sex cells which are impacted by such mutations the entire generation of the affected individual actually gets affected how because the sex cells can be transmitted to the next generation and that generation can again inherit that mutation and transmit the same mutation to the other generation so it's sex cells so it's very very obvious and very appropriate to term such mutations as germline mutations because they affect the entire lineage and they are the the call the cells which are impacted by such mutations are the germlines germline cells or the sex cells similarly for somatic mutations the cells impacted are all other body cells they are not sex cells now because of the fact that somatic mutations happen in other body cells and not the sex cells they are not transmittable to the next generation okay so i give you a very easy to understand diagram for this for the germline mutation as you can see the cells impacted are the sex cells and that ends up affecting the entire organism and its subsequent generations on the other hand in the somatic mutations case the cells impacted are not the germline this impact takes place in some other body cell it's a somatic mutation it is not impacting the sex cells which in turn means that only a patch or only a part of the organism gets affected by the mutation and not the entire organism and that mutation is not transmitted to the next progeny or the next generation such mutations the somatic mutations are also called acquired mutations because we do not inherit them we acquire them in our lifespan okay so now based upon the cells impacted we got uh, other two types of mutations one is germline and other is somatic mutation so in total we got four types of mutations first induced second spontaneous third is germline and fourth is somatic mutations so with this we cover two broad classification schemas one is causes and other is cells impacted and based on them we cover four types of mutations induced spontaneous germline and somatic so now let's shift to a very very significant classification scheme which is the scale of mutations whether the mutation is happening at a very small level or it is happening at a very large level so what do we mean by that small and large level 